Welcome back to the channel today. We are checking out the Prince's private collection. It is at the new location, just next to my house. Une personne aussi. Oui. So there we are, we just entered, checking out some uh, helmets. So Michael Schumacher gifted my dad one of his uh, first racing helmets. It looks very, very similar to the Ayrton Senna one. It's quite interesting. I'll check it out at home. Pretty cool to have these Formula One cars up on the wall like this. I don't know if the engine is in them because that, that would be very, very heavy to maintain on the wall. But the, here, you guys know I love vintage cars. Look at this, this is paradise. Oh my God, oh my God. Check this out. This is absolutely unbelievable. I don't even know if this is road legal. It's got a massive propeller like a plane at the front. And apparently all the cars work. Every single one of them here works. They've got a workshop at the back, so they make sure that all the cars are running. This is an extreme collection. Now these next vehicles are obviously meant to be tracted by horses, but look how prestigious these look. Forget about your Ferraris, Lambo, like modern cars. If you rock up to any sort of event, nightclub, in one of these bad boys, my God. I mean, how cool would that be? The absolute beauties. Everything's so modern here, like the old museum was cool, but this just makes it to a whole new level. And it's brand new, it literally just opened about a... So we've had the because of it, in no? Just over a week it's been open. And they've got like information about all the vehicles. Oh, it's too silly, mate. They make it. It's the voitures of who? It's the voitures of my prince. These cars are all owned by the prince over the years. They've accumulated them from, you know, father and son passed down. And they've put in this museum because of how unique they are. I mean, look at this. Absolute limousine here. Weighs 2.2 tons. I wouldn't be surprised if it's bulletproof. Coming up on a very special car because this is the car that Prince Albert II got married in and it's here on display and I was actually at that wedding. During his vows, during his speech, so it was very, very cool. What I don't understand is why half the car is missing. What's the use of that? The driver has way less space. That doesn't make much sense to me. Side note, do you guys think Louis has lost weight? He has, because a, a girl dumped him and then he just went on a whole workout spree. <laughs> oh, he's understanding what I'm saying. Usually he doesn't understand the English. But yeah, it's good. He's been working out now because he got a lot of weight before. Got comfortable around the ladies. He gets dumped severely, starts working out. That's it. I've actually driven that on the simulator at home and it's impossible to drive. So I can't even believe what it'd be like in real life to have that between your legs. Well, in between your hands. The Monaco has changed so much over the years that you can see the, the vintage track there. You can't even recognize half of it. A lot of buildings are the same, but there's a lot more uh, trees around Monaco. Louis is telling me that's worth between 500,000 to almost a million bucks. I wonder how much there is in this museum, like how much the whole museum must cost. This is the Formula One of Leclerc from 2021. And now that you can see it really up close, you can see all the minor details on the car, which makes you understand why each part is worth so much. Also in terms of length, they're massive. Like no wonder they're having issues going around the Formula One track in Monaco, because if you look at older models, they're a lot shorter. But the old models, the driver was more towards the middle, whereas now on the newer ones, he's more towards the front. So it's almost like a fighter jet. And you, you have view of the DRS there, and you can see that the older models don't have DRS. One thing I just noticed is the nose of the Formula Ones has been different throughout the years. I mean, you can check here how high up it is compared to there back in the day, rounded off. And now with the modern one of uh, Leclerc, it's completely down on the ground, which is super, super interesting. Is it a Formula Lamborghini? A Lamborghini Formula One. Never heard of that. The Countach. I feel like it's lost its charm. When I was young, this used to be like a wow car. 
But now looking at it, it's like 80% engine and then gearbox. And it, it just doesn't have the sex appeal that I thought it used to have. Now, it, it doesn't have, it's not as vicious looking as, uh, as I thought it was. Maybe it's because of the modern lines nowadays, the modern designs. Like some vintage cars look really cool when they get older and some of them just don't keep their coolness. I think we're coming towards the end of the tour right now. Oof, we're back in the heat. Uh, the museum is not that bad. I've got to say, I feel like there's less cars than there were in the original one. I don't know why. We're now going to head to the yacht club to relax there a little bit by the pool. Join us. Join us at the pool. Gonna get some nice tanning going. That's it. Just gonna have a little bit of a coffee, relax, talk business, and uh, spend uh, a couple hours here at the pool. I need to tan, so I might come here tomorrow to uh, work on my tan because I really need to get that going. Don't usually like chocolate. For some reason, I like it here in my coffee. Don't know if you do this, but do you put chocolate in your coffee? No, sure I did. I want to know what you guys thought of the museum today. I thought it was absolutely incredible. Compared to the old one, like this is a whole new thing. You have to go check it out if you're in Monaco. It's one of those museums that you have to because it's the whole heritage of the royal family. It gives an insight into what cars were here before. You see what, the old, what Monaco used to look like. Go check it out. We'll see you guys in the next video next week. I found my love in Porto Fico.